Right, hello, uh, Jeff and Wilma here at Budroom, and this is the 31st of August, which is officially the last, the last day of winter here. And uh, I'm uh, in the uh, process of uh, taking drastic measures to stop my bees from swarming. So we've had an average of about uh, one phone call every two days for the last month with people with bee problems because bees are swarming. And, uh, and what I'm doing is I'll just show you how I go about it. This is the first hive I've looked at that isn't preparing to swarm in the last week. So uh, one way you can tell is uh, uh, drones in between the tops of the frames and the queen excluder. And you can see on this frame, uh, that's second or third from the end, there's, there's still honey above, above the brood. And you say so that sort of indicates that they haven't gone right up to the queen excluder with their brood yet. So the frame forward, so. So uh, I'll just uh, you can see here they're bringing back heaps of pollen. Now you can see all around here all that pollen they're bringing in. And uh, in one, in some cases, I'm just removing a, the whole frame of pollen. Uh, no, there's no, no queen cells with eggs in them. And, uh, there you can see on this one. Now, we arrived here about an hour ago, and the, uh, the bloke who lives here, Frank, who's a fisherman, came to the gate and met us. And he said, oh, you should have been here yesterday. There's a big swarm. So I found which hive it was that swarmed. And uh, this is number two site, and... Uh, I've been all week at number one site uh, trying to stop them from swarming and every hive I looked at yesterday or for the last four days are preparing to swarm. So there's a, yeah, now this is the only one so far that's not. See they're building queen cells but there's no eggs in that one. Now, uh, giving plenty of smoke. What I have been doing is just, I'm going to cut the brood out of four frames and uh, just put four empty frames in there without the foundation. Well, this outside frame here is just chock-a-block full of honey. Absolutely chockers. So what I'm doing, I'm going to cut the, uh, well, everything out below the honey. Even the worker comb, which breaks my heart to do that, but this is the first year I'm doing this in 24 years. First time I've destroyed any worker cane, any worker brood. But it's kind of a matter of if I don't do that, I'll never get back out fishing again. So, uh, so I'm going to just put this back in between the uh, the, the cone. Radio. So I'm just going to show you why. One of the advantages of using a mat, so I, I sort of partly opened this lid before, but I'll show you part of the reason for using the mat on top of the lid. You can see wow, what happens. Wow. See, they're starting to build comb between the lid and the mat, which means that you're not going to get honeycomb between the top of the frame and the lid. So you've just got that mat you can sort of separate. You can so it stops the frames getting stuck. Yeah. You can see what's happened there, they've left a gap. So the queen can come up and uh, lay eggs in the, in the comb. See how they've left a sort of a... Whereabouts? See how they've left a half round gap there. Oh right, yes. For the queen, because they don't know the queen excluder is there. No. The queen can come up and lay eggs in there. So that's a good, another indication that it's time to weaken them out a bit. So what I do is I just sit, sit my frames on the, on the ground up against the thing and then you're not shaking too many bees. So shaking the bees upsets them a little bit. So when these full depth supers are full of honey, I generally take about three or four frames out before I attempt to pick it up, to lift it up. Because, uh, I just need to go for a minute. Because sometimes the queen may be 
on the queen excluder. The other day I, I did that, I had a look. There was three, three bees under the queen excluder and one of them was the queen. Wow. So it pays to just look, see if she's not on the queen excluder. That's, that's what I do. Now this is a, a, a foundationless uh, frame I put in two weeks ago. And uh, what I'm going to do is, regardless of whether it's worker or drone, just cut the whole lot out and put it back in again. And uh, now this one hasn't got any queen cells on it. Even though there's a lot of bees up in the lid, there's no queen cells on there. So I'm just going to pull the other ones out and see. So when you put uh, frames without foundation, always put it between two uh, full two existing frames that are fully drawn, and then the bees will just come straight down in between the gaps. Now what I did when I took the the brood out of this hive and replaced it with the empty foundationless frames, I used those frames to strengthen another hive at number one site. But the trouble is, I haven't got any more hives to strengthen. Uh, all my hives are pretty well fully st full strength. Oh, Jeff's just in the process here of cutting the brood out of the frame. It's not something that we want to do or that we've ever, ever done before, but we just have to. What I do is leave a little bit of honey on top with honey in it. So they build down from there. Mm. Okay. I can't get too close at this at the moment because they're very cranky and my hands are uncovered. Well, that beautiful honeycomb has got to remove. How close can you zoom in on that? Can you zoom right in on that? Yes. That's just almost fully capped. Isn't that beautiful? It is beautiful. Now, there's uh, no queen cells on this one yet. Now you notice here, this one hasn't got any queen cells, but you'll notice again the honey has the, the cells haven't come right up to the queen excluder. There's still honey between the top bar and the brood. So uh, it won't be long and these will be getting ready to swarm just like the others. Right, now this is the hive that swarmed. So as you, if you come a bit closer, uh, you can see here there's very few bees in the top box. So that's a dead giveaway that the hive has swarmed. So what I'm going to do, because there's very few bees in the top box, is take all the honey out because of the small hive beetle problems, I don't want the small hive beetle to, in, to get into the honey, so I don't want that honey destroyed. So uh, I've got another box on top of this hive here. I'm just going to uh, put the honey on top of that. And, uh, and what I've, now, the other thing I'm going to do is get into the bottom box, and I've got a couple of frames there Particularly that one there near the tree there. Now it's got no bees on it. You can just see it's yeah about 70 percent fully capped. So what I'll do is I'll take out any of the uh, daggy frames from the bottom box where they swarm and replace the daggy frames with those good frames. So 